What is up YouTube? Today I want to go sailing and I want to take you with me. It's springtime. A lot of people have been asking me, is sailing difficult? Is sailing expensive? No to both of those. It's not that expensive. You can get into it for as much as you would pay for camera equipment or, or a motorcycle. A couple thousand dollars. It sounds a little pricey, but no more than a lot of other hobbies. Two, is it difficult? No, it's a lot of vocabulary. It's kind of intimidating vocabulary because it's brand new. But once you learn some of that and you get underway and you start learning some of the maneuvers, you can be good to go. So today I've done my best to put together a comprehensive tutorial on the basics of sailing. We're talking about the points of sail, the vocabulary, and then sailing. If you want to skip straight ahead to the sailing, you can skip to the 11 or 12 minute mark. Now, I've kept this fairly basic. I'm not going to fly the spinnaker. I'm not going to do more of the advanced techniques. But this is a fairly long video, so thanks for watching and let's go sailing. In order to understand how to sail, you first have to understand your boat's relationship to the wind. So let's say the wind is coming from this direction. We're looking at an overhead view of us on the water. Easiest to understand this is looking at a clock. And approximately 10 and 2 is going to be called the no-go zone. You're not going to be able to take your boat into this area because if you take your boat here, the wind is going to hit you straight on and the sails are going to luff in the wind. It's called going in irons and you're not going to move anywhere. Now I'm in irons. As long as you're outside of this 45 degree angle, you can go here. That's going to be called close haul. You can go here also. That's your boat right there called a beam reach. You can go here or anywhere. I'm just giving you the designated areas. And this is called a broad reach. And you can go straight downwind. There's your wind hitting right here. Your boat is going this direction. That is called either running or dead downwind. Same goes for the other side. It's called a broad reach. You're going at a 90 degree angle with the wind. That's going to be called a beam reach. And you're going to be right here at a close hauled, which is close to the no-go zone, but you can still go with the wind hitting you and you propels you forward. Now, how does that work? How are you propelled forward? If you are either at a close haul or perhaps a beam reach when you're not going dead downwind. So let's say I have a piece of ice right here. That's going to be my boat. Let's say this is going to be the wind. This finger is the wind and my thumb is the water. Now the wind and the water work as two forces against each other against my boat. The wind is pressing against the sails while the water is pressing against the keel and the rudder. So you have those two opposite forces going and it makes it go forward. When those forces are working against each other, the boat moves forward because of a combination of the shape of the boat, kind of shaped like an arrow, along with the lift from the sail like an airplane wing, and the wings that are below the water that you don't see, the keel and the rudder, and you're forced to go forward. Now, when you're going dead downwind, you don't get the same physics. You can move forward, but it's simply because the sails are acting like parachutes, catching the wind, and you move in that direction. Typically, if you're in the beam reach area at a 90 degree angle, is when you're going to get the most force from the wind, reacting against the force from the keel and the water, and it's going to give you your fastest point of sail. Another way to think of this, and you can quiz your friends doing this, or you can look in the mirror, but it's to designate the wind coming from this direction. So you are the wind, right? <laughs> I can't go this way, it's a no-go zone, right? If I turn slightly, it's going to be a close hauled. Turn at a 90 degree angle, that's a beam reach. Turn this way, it's going to be a broad reach. Go completely down this way, it's going to be running with the wind. You get the idea, now let's put this stuff in practice. First thing, we have the cockpit is where you're going to sit when you're sailing. You have here a tiller. This is what will turn the rudder of the boat. The rudder is underneath the hull of the boat and the rudder is going to be sticking way down in the water and it will turn the boat as you go. So this is a tiller. Now, other boats might have a steering wheel right here or what's called a helm. After you look at the cockpit, you obviously have the tall thing in the middle is called the mast, right? What is this long thing here? It's called the boom. 
you got the mast comes down to the boom now what is this this is a rope that will connect to the mainsail and will help you control the mainsail but it's not called a rope in sailing this is called a sheet this is the main sheet during sailing you might have someone say let out the main sheet pull in the main sheet uh, that's to put tension on the sail for different angles of wind. This is the mainsail. The mainsail cover right now, this red piece of fabric, the mainsail is covered. We'll take it off in a moment. Looking down again on the side of the cockpit, this is called a winch. This is where you're going to take the sheet from the head sail and you're going to wrap it here always in a clockwise manner. And that's where you're going to help with your getting your tension on the sail. So this is a winch. There's typically a winch handle, so you put it in here and you can actually get a better grip. You're going to use the winch for the head sail sheets. Let's go up here. These are the rigging that will support the mast to make sure it's going to stay up. You have different rigging throughout. On the back here you have what's called a back stay. It's holding up the back portion of the mast. On the sides you have what is called shrouds and on the front here or the bow of the boat you have the force stay or the jib stay now on the force stay this is where we put the head sail it could be a jib sail in technical terms a jib sail is 100 percent or less what does that mean it's just the size of the fabric of the sail. So 100% would be a triangle that goes from here and essentially meets right here on the mast and that would make up the triangle of 100%. If it's bigger, if it's bigger than 100%, if your piece of fabric of the sail is going all the way from the forestay past the mast, that's going to be called a Genoa. A Genoa. Now we're going to be using a Genoa today. I think it's 130% sail and we're going to put it on the forestay. There's different types of forestay. This particular sailboat has a track system, so you'll put the head sail, you'll put the head sail in this track and you'll take it up. There are other boats that have what's called hanks and they're little clamps. When you get to a little bit of a bigger boat, you'll find what's called a roller furling. It has a little drum at the bottom that spins the sail to wrap it up and then it's an easy access in and out. You have in the front, it's going to be called obviously the bow, which is a common term people know, or the foredeck. Um, that would be the front side of the boat. Now this particular boat has an outboard motor to get in and out of the slip. Uh, now, you don't even need a motor when you're doing sailing. That's the beauty of sailing. When you're learning with a smaller boat, they might not even have a motor, and you might just have to find the wind, put up the sail right out of the dock, and then make your way. With sailboats, even though everything looks like ropes, there's actually different names for the different types of ropes. So like I said before, this that would connect to the bottom of the sail that, that creates the adjustment on the sail, these are called sheets. So you have two sets of sheets. You have the main sheet and the jib sheet. You also have what's called the halyard, okay? The halyard, the halyard is gonna connect to the top of each sail. So you have a halyard for the main sail, you also have a halyard for the head sail that's going to connect to the head of the sail. You're then going to raise the halyard and you're going to raise the sail. So you have uh, the rope that's pulling up the head of the sail is called the halyard. To adjust the tension on the uh, sail, you're going to have those called sheets. Now, the lines that are connected to the dock, those are called dock lines. All right, so you have lines, halyards, sheets. That's the basic, uh, that's gonna be the basic thing you need to know for now. Now we're gonna prep the boat to get underway. We're gonna take off this mainsail cover. 
Now I'm going to grab the head of the mainsail and put it in its track. I then grab the halyard and place it on the mainsail. Now I'm not going to raise the mainsail at this time, I'm just getting it into position. So I pulled the slack out of the halyard and now it's ready to go once we're in the wind. Now I'm going to get the head sail ready and in this boat it's stored under this hatch. I unfold the head sail. I attach the tack part of the sail at the bottom of the forestay near the deck. I then put the head of the sail into the track of the forestay. I take the halyard and connect it to the head of the sail. Then I pull on the halyard to take out the slack. Again, I'm not raising the sail, but I'm getting it into position. It's a good idea to tie this head sail down so it doesn't fly into the water before we raise it. Now a little more vocabulary. So you have three parts of the triangle, obviously. You have the head, which is the top triangle piece. You have the tack, which is the front triangle piece, which attaches to the bow at the very front of the boat. You also have the clue, which is the triangle portion on the back side of the sail. Now you've got your jib sheet. I'm going to put it on the clue of this Genoa sail. Now I have my two jib sheets, one for each side of the boat. I'm going to take each sheet to the outside of the shrouds. Then the jib sheet goes through this block and I tie a figure eight knot in the end so it doesn't come out while underway. Then the same thing on the other side. Now just tidy up the sheets so they aren't all over the place. Some other quick vocabulary would be what's right and left, right? We have starboard is the right, we have port is left. You can remember port because it's four letters and left is four letters. So port is on your left side, starboard is on your right side. What we'll do is we'll get out of the dock area using the outboard engine. We'll get out into the open water where then we can raise the sails. This is the main sheet, I'm getting it ready. By the way, you should always wear a life jacket. I have this life jacket tied to my GoPro, so at least he will be safe if he goes overboard. Now we are out away from the dock, so as I get ready to handle the lines, I like to put on gloves, but this is optional. Before we put up the sails, we want to get the boat going directly into the wind. You can check your wind vane at the top of the mast to see wind direction. Now let's put up the mainsail. I grab the main halyard here. On this boat, I typically need to help the sail up the track, so I stand on the deck. I pull a little on the halyard, then I take off the sail ties, then pull up the sail as fast as you can. This can be a little tough if you're on your own because no one's steering the boat. But the sail is now up. And we're sailing. Let's turn off the motor. Beautiful, quiet, only the wind. Let's get into our close hauled position. I'm going to pull the main sheet. I'm going to pull it high <laughs> and turn slightly into the wind. See, it's too much, too much. Fall off the wind, fall off the wind. Let it catch, let it catch. There we go. All right, so you want it to go right, you can go right past that point to where the sail is gonna be luffing. And then let it fill the sail. Look at those telltales to see if they're sticking straight out. Once we fall off of the wind, we're gonna let this out. We're turning downwind, and now we're going at a broad reach. Almost running with the wind. Let's go back a little way. And now let's bring it in again for more of a close hauled. 
bring it in bring in the main sheet you can see that it's now lining up to where we're in the middle of the boat and we're also turning at the same time and we're gonna get into that we're a little bit into the wind I'm gonna fall off of the wind just slightly and there we go now we've got the sail is full and we're going at about that 45 degree angle off the wind now let's put up the head sail now the head sail on this boat is actually much easier to get up than the main sail so that should be pretty easy and once we get this head sail up you're gonna feel a difference we're gonna be moving pretty good because that head sail yeah, it picks up a lot of extra wind and a lot of extra speed so let's go for it we're gonna put our gloves back on again not mandatory but i highly recommend it then i'm going to get the sail tie from the front it's not safe to run up to the foredeck when sailing by yourself but i've got to do it then i'm going to come back and then i'm going to lift the jib halyard raise the halyard the Genoa or jib is going to go to the top. You're going to have the two triangles. Let's do it. Again, you want to go into the wind when you want to raise the sail with the halyard. Got the sail tie. Now, grab the jib halyard and raise the sail. Now grab the jib sheet on the side of the sail. This is the starboard side. Now we're golden. Now we're gonna fall off the wind and we're gonna catch the wind. You always wanna clean up your cockpit area, making sure that the lines and sheets are not tangled and they're not in your way. I've got my jib halyard here, which is now a lot longer after raising the head sail. So I will coil it up and throw the end below in the cabin to keep it out of the way. Now we have a better organized space in which to work. Now that we've got both sails up, we're moving pretty good. This is what it's all about right here. We've got our Genoa up, or the jib sail, which is the head sail. We've got the main sail up. We are on a port tack. Okay? What is a port tack? That means the wind is coming over our port side. The wind is coming from this direction. Now, let's get some maneuvers going. Probably the most basic sailing maneuver is a tack, T-A-C-K. What is this? It simply means we are going to turn into the wind, turn past the wind, and the sails are going to end up on the other side of the boat after the turn. Let's get ready. If you've got somebody with you, the common courtesy to say, ready to tack, your partner in the boat would say ready, and then once you get going, you would say tacking. So I'm gonna act like I have somebody here. I'm gonna make sure my lines are in order. Before we turn, I need to fix a tangle in my jib sheet. This is tricky with one person. Again, not super safe to run onto the foredeck when no one is steering. I don't have any kind of autopilot, but luckily the boat is sailing very straight today. So now I've reset my port side jib sheet. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna get some speed going because whenever you turn, you don't wanna be caught in the middle. You're gonna be in irons, which is whenever you're directly into the wind and your boat stops the momentum. I've got my port side jib sheet. The one wrap around the winch just to get it ready. After tacking, this is going to go automatically. The main sail is going to go on its own when you turn, but I have to control the jib sheet. Okay, ready, ready to tack or coming about, tacking. I'm turning, I'm turning, release the starboard jib sheet, then grab the port side jib sheet. I should have kept turning a little more. Now your sails will catch the wind from the starboard side and you can secure the jib sheet on the port side. There we go, not too difficult. Now just work on that good angle with the wind. 
I want to pull this jib sheet in a bit if I'm going to be close hauled. I'm also going to pull the main sheet in. What I can tell you is if you're going to be close hauled, the closer you are to the wind, both your jib sheet and your main sheet will be pulled about as tight as you can. As you fall off the wind, you will loosen your sheets and let them out. If you can remember this concept, sailing is pretty simple. Now I'm going to turn a little to the left to the port side, so I will let out the sheets. Just a little though, you want to go in small increments as you transition to a beam reach. And again, you will look at those little ribbons on the sails, the telltales, to see if they are sticking straight out and adjust your sails as needed. Just a little, I'm pulling on the sheet, just a little, a couple of inches. And there we go, we're sailing. Look, Mom, no hands. Now I want to show you a jibe. It's similar to a tack where we're turning, but a jibe is with the wind coming from behind. So instead of going into the wind as we did with the tack, we're going to let the wind pass us at the rear or the stern of the boat. It's a little trickier because as soon as the wind catches the mainsail, it will fling the sail and the boom to the opposite side. So you have to be careful when jibing so no one gets hit on the head with the boom. You want to have the main sheet in quite a way so that the boom has less distance to travel. So bring in your main sheet for a more controlled jibe. Let's jibe. Everybody ready? So I'm going to go into the dead downwind position. You see what's happening right now is a very slow jibe. Controlled jibe. I'm going to switch sides onto the other side of the boat. You can see we need to pull in on the head sail. And now we're good to go. The wind is still at our back, so I need to let out the sheets a bit more. Okay, so that's a jibe, not much to it. Let's do another quick tack. Remember the tack is where we turn into the wind and then pass the wind with our bow. Tacking, release the jib sheet on the starboard side. Switch sides. You want to move to the high side or the windward side. Grab the jib sheet on the port side. Trim in on the jib sheet. Done. Now we are on a starboard tack. We're on a starboard tack because the wind is coming over our starboard side. It's going this way. That's pretty much sailing right there. Here's the play-by-play. -play. I have released the knots from the jib sheets. They are ready to go forward when I pull down the head sail. When I get going into the wind, in irons, I'm going to release the halyard. I'm going to go up to the foredeck. I'm going to pull down the head sail off of the track we talked about earlier, and then I'll stuff it into the hatch. I'll fold it up later. All right, let's do it. Here's my halyard. I need to make sure it's not tangled. So I'm going to bring it back into the cockpit, organize it, now see the sails starting to luff as I turn into the wind? Release the halyard, go forward, and wrestle down the head sail. Alright, I'm going to start the motor. Now, ready for the mainsail. I'm going to get the sail ties. Got the sail ties ready. Now I'm in irons. I'm in a good spot. 
The main sail is more difficult because I have to flake it as it comes down to tie it onto the boom. Now I'm taking the halyard off the head of the sail. I'm going to bring the halyard back to the end of the boom where I will attach it to keep the boom up. So that's pretty much the basics of sailing. I will continue to tidy up the deck and put things away before getting back to the dock. Today we've covered the basics and I encourage you to take a sailing lesson to get out on the water and to go sailing. Please subscribe for more and feel free to ask me questions or make a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and happy sailing.